cannot be released. But tonight, they will be released. Yeah. I said tonight, they will be released. Yeah. In order to give you an understanding of what this seal means, I will take you to the Bible one way or the other. I'm not going to read much of the scriptures because we will be closing not too long from now. Now, Ezekiel chapter 9, verse 4, I think that the guys that are operating on this, uh, yeah, be beautiful. 9, verse 4, can we read together? And the Lord said unto him, Go to the midst of the city, to the midst of Jerusalem, and set a mark or a seal upon the foreheads of the men that sigh and that cry for all the abomination that be done in the midst thereof. So, a seal is also called a mark. You know, there was a place in the Bible, in the book of Galatians chapter 2, the Bible says, touch not this one, for I bear it in my body the mark or the seal of Christ. So, every believer has a mark or a seal of ownership that is embossed in your head. So that is why when Satan looks and sees the seal, he says, this one is his father's property. Touch him not. How many of you knows that you have a seal over your head? Nobody can see the seal easily unless it is a fellow brother. Also, the enemy sees it and they understand. Now, there was something that happened in the Bible, which is a historic transaction. In the book of Jeremiah chapter 32, I will read from verse 24. You know, but it's a long passage, I will, I will explain it, then we read verse 24. You know, when God was about to allow the enemy to destroy Israel, especially Jerusalem, and they carry them captive, he first of all told Jeremiah, go and buy a field. And they pay the money and let them give you the deed of conveyance and seal it according to the way the transactions can be done. And then Jeremiah went to his relation, paid him the money, they gave him the deed of conveyance, and they gave him the, the document containing the seal. He said, This thing I'm saying to you is that you should buy this deed. That it is a prophetic transaction or a prophetic action that will be fulfilled. That so many years to come, men will buy the land with money and they seal it and they own properties in Jerusalem and in Israel. Though you will be you have been carried captive, but some days to come and many years to come, men will dwell in this city. And uh, but can we read it? Thank you. Behold the months, behold the, the months, they are come unto the sea, take it, and the city and give it to the hand of the Chaldean that fight against it because of the sword. What am I trying to do? 32 verse 44, sorry. Yes. Can we read it together? Men shall buy field for money and subscribe evidences. And seal them and take witnesses in the land of Benjamin and the places about Jerusalem and in the cities of Judah and in the cities of the mountains and in the cities of the valley and in the cities of the south. For I will cause their captivity to return, says the Lord. Are you seeing it? So let me give you the story, the historical fulfillment. So in my different today, when the present is ready, when the Jews were forced to return to their homeland after the First and Second World War. No, the Arabs agreed to wipe them out because in those days they used to terrorize them. So they brought the, 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 they brought the case to the United Nations. And then in the United Nations, the Israeli representatives were asked to prove that this land belongs to them. They, they have already excavated the document that Jeremiah signed when he bought the field belonging to Hanamel. 
So they, pre they presented it before the United Nations as evidence that that land belongs to them. And they said now they should allow Israel to live there. Now, when you want to understand a seal, now let me take you back to the book of Esther. Are you there with me? Yes. The book of Esther, if we start from chapter 3, you will find out that the Lord God did the remarkable things which I will share in a hurry because I want us to pray. Now, when, when this man, Mordecai, was sitting at the king's gate there was a time two men decided to assassinate the king and to take over the rulership so Mordecai lived in the secret and it was investigated that Bictana and Peresh actually wanted to overthrow the government and assassinate the king so they took them and killed them but they forgot to honor the man who saved the life of the king so and the Bible says that a man called Mordecai, I mean, a man called Haman. Everybody say Haman. Haman. Everybody say Haman. Haman. You know, Haman has a, a biblical and a baptismal name. He says Haman is the son of Hamadet, the Agagite, the enemy of the Jews. Have you ever seen it in the Bible? Now, I want us to read verse 1. After this thing, the king Ahasuerus promoted the son of Hamadatha, the Agagite, and advised him to send him to sit above all the princes that were in the kingdom. So, when they promoted him, whenever he passes through the gate, he will see all the gate men will prostrate, but the man will put his hands in his pocket and refuse to prostrate. And the man asks, who was that man that don't used to nail down before me? They say he was of the stock of the Jews. They usually don't bow down to people. So the man made a mistake. Instead of capturing Mordecai and killing him, he decided that the whole Jews would be killed on the account of Mordecai. So how did he do it? First of all, he gathered all the magicians, the astrologers, and the witch doctors, and they asked them to continue to chant, to pray, to invoke witchcraft over the kingdom. So they started from the first day of the month until the last day of the month, for one full year. So when they have bewitched the kingdom, he quietly came to the king and announced to the king, there are certain people that are scattered in all the provinces of your dominion. Their laws are different from our laws and their culture are different from our culture. Therefore, King, it is not worthy for them to live. Why don't you write a decree that they be wiped out and I will pay 10,000 talents of silver? You see the effect of sorcery and witchcraft. The king did not ask him who are the people. The king quickly Remove his seal of authority and gave him the seal. Since you have brought the 10,000 talent, go and write the decree as you like and seal it with my seal because whatever that is sealed with the king's seal, nobody can revoke it. What happened? The man went and he issued the decree on the 13th day of the first month. And that the execution will be on the 13th day of the 12 months. I will not bother him by telling you the mystery of 13 days. Because in Jewish calendar, they use the lunar months. When the moon appears as a crescent moon, it is the first day of the month. 13 to 15 days later, the moon will be in a complete circle. It is called the full moon. Now you understand what I'm talking about? So, from the day they issued the decree, it was the 13th day of the month, which was the eve to the full moon. And the day the decree will be executed will also be a full moon. 
Somebody has given me the thing. So let me not bother you because it will waste our time. But what I'm trying to say is that they sealed the seal, the decree on the 13th day of the first moon, that it will be executed on the 13th day of the 12 months. Now, when Esther and Mordecai fasted for only three days, what happened? The power changed hands. Everybody say, power changed hands. Power changed hands. Anybody that has sealed your destiny, power will change hands this night. Amen. Power will change hands this night. Amen. So I'm trying to tell you what happened after the three days fasting. When somebody should have been looking very pale, Esther knew that I must go before the king to bring an intercession in order to change the decrees. You know the history, what God did, and then the Jews were saved, they were not killed, a man was killed, his ten children were killed, and they gave Esther everything that contained pertaining to a man. But one secret thing that happened was when they gave Esther and Mordecai the authority to write their own decree, I want you to open to chapter 8, verse 8 and 9. Are you there? Yes. Now, can we read together? One to go. This is a message to Esther and the Mordecai and the Jews. One to go. Write you also for the Jews as it like it to you in the king's name and sell it with the king's ring. For the writing which is written in the king's name and the seal with the king's ring may no man and do what so are you hearing that whatever that is sealed no man will reverse so after this day the jews were saved they fought the battle and killed their enemies and the enemy went to rest but they did not forget on the in the year 1900 listen to me let me give you another historical fact a german archaeologist went to the ancient shrine in pegamos and discovered there was a temple there called the temple of lucifer can you open to me revelation chapter 2 verse 13. when i read it i will explain to you the order of prayer are we there? I know your works where you where you dwell, even where Satan's seat is. Some translations say where Satan's throne is. And uh, you hold fast my name and has not denied my faith. My faith, even the days where Antipas was my mother. Now listen, the Bible is saying that the church in Pegamos was built where Satan's throne was. So a German archaeologist discovered the seat of throne of Satan. And he went and they numbered the bricks, even to the foundation, excavated it and carried it into Germany and rebuilt the, the temple of Lucifer there. After building it, Satan relocated his headquarters to Germany. <laughs> now listen, when the headquarters moved there, he started looking for a replacement of a man. And he found Hitler. All of them started with H. And he told Hitler, when Esther and Mordecai fasted, they only gave them the signet ring. The decree they wrote did not cancel the other decree. Therefore, the money was not returned. The decree was not cancelled. Therefore, the same people, Haman wrote the decree to kill, are now living in Germany. Therefore, do wise thing and avenge the blood. After the first and second world war, how many number of Jews were killed? Six million Jews. Because the Jews did not revoke that very decree and did not terminate that money. I want you to pray one prayer. Any decree they wrote in your father's house before you were born. Every covenant they entered before you were born that the enemy is carrying forward in your life must be broken tonight. Can you stand up and let us pray?
I want you to repeat after me with force and fire. Are you ready to pray? Yes. Say after me, my father. My father. Every decree, every decree that was written in my father's house and in my mother's house or in my community, even before I was born or when I was born, even till this day,
Satan was delaying the process. Is it from God? Do you know why the father of John the Baptist was dumb when he doubted the angel? He was almost the same statement he said that Mary said. Mary said, how can that be? Seeing I was not completely married. I have not been married legally. He had just done the introduction. We were only engaged. How can that be? Seeing I am not yet married. John the Baptist's father, Zachariah, said, How can that be? See, we were well stricken in age. We were well stricken. He was maybe 80 years. The wife also 80 years. Then if you give us some now, how many years will we live before we die? How, how can we we the more? So that was a protest. You did not give me the son when I was 30, when I was 40, when I was 50, when I was 60, but well, now that I'm 85 or 90. Every seal of delay in your life must be broken now in the name of Jesus. Another seal is the seal of denial. Do you know the meaning of denial? Now this promotion is due for you. And that you are supposed to go because your boss will retire this month. They will go from another department and from another ministry to poach another successor to deny you that promotion and that seat that is due to you. Do you understand what I'm talking about? One lady came and told me, Pastor, the promotion interview in my office, we went finished and I passed. When they were computing the name, they omitted my name. He said, I passed it, sir. But when they were computing the name, the finalist, they omitted her name. And when they came, the, ma the manager said, don't worry, we will do something, we will do something. Till four years later, they went for another uh, 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 promotion interview. She passed, as they were doing, she they omitted her name again. And now, uh, <laughs> when the manager couldn't do anything, they transferred her to another department because it was an insult. Her junior were now being her boss. The promotion that was due to her was denied. Because there was a seal that is holding that promotion. And that is called the seal of denial. Oh, one day, a young man, my friend, came to marry a lady. And he came for the introduction and the engagement and the engagement. So when they were preparing to come and do the final marriage rite, he saw the younger sister of the wife say, I love this one more. <laughs> and the man was rich. The father said, instead of missing this rich man, come and take the one you like. <laughs> and the man insisted and married the younger sister. And the enemy denied the elder sister the marriage. What do you think happened to that lady? The seal of denial to deny her the marriage. Every seal of denial in your life is hereby broken. I say it is 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 broken. is the third seal. Lamentation 3 verse 35. Can somebody put it on the board for me? I want us to read it. To turn aside the right of a man before the face of the most high and uh, command. Go ahead. 
The next verse. To subvert a man of his cause, the Lord does not approve it. That means God does not approve denials and deprivation. And it is Satan that approves it. <coughs> I met a pastor who is a senior pastor. He retired as a senior civil servant. And when I visited him, he told me, Pastor, I am not the owner of this house. He lives in a duplex. He said, I'm still paying rent. I was so surprised. He grew as a senior civil servant and he retired without a house. I said, what happened? He said, my brother, I bought four choice properties that when I retire, I will either sell one and use the money to develop the rest. He said, the one at that strategic place, somebody came and contended with it. We went to God. The man won me. The second one, somebody came and took it. We went to God. The man won the case. The third one, somebody took it. We went to God. The man won the case. He said, the last one is still in court. Everything I have ever saved, the enemy has succeeded in depriving him of those things. He said, I am 69 years now. Where am I going to get money? to build a house at this age. The enemy put a seal that whatever you do on earth we will deprive you the opportunity of having a landed property of your own. And the man came to me and said, Pastor, Father, I need your help. And I said, give me some time to pray. I went into prayer. The Lord told me, take this man to his land of nativity in a night and pray throughout the night and release him from his house. When I finished and prayed and ministered to him, I, my friend, we returned back to the city where we lived. And I forgot about the man. So one day I went to service my car and I was in the garage. The man called me and said, Joe Paul, I saw you. You drove past me now. I said, yes, it's true. He said, can I see you? I said, where are you? He said, he was standing at the church. And I walked across to go and see him. He asked me to enter his car. Enter this car. He said, this car is mine. He said, after that prayer, the doors were open. He said, do you know, pastor, I'm building a house now. Because the seal of deprivation was broken. Every seal of deprivation in your life is hereby broken. the first, the second, the third property, the fourth property, they took it all. And they were taking it, the man was praying. Which kind of prayer are you praying? And you're not getting an answer. The seal must be broken. That is what God wants you to do. Pray for the first property, they took it. The second one, they took it, and you're still praying. The third one, they took it, and you're still praying. time we need to ask God what is the problem? The, the fourth seal is the seal of disinheritance. Everybody say disinheritance. disinheritance. Everybody say disinheritance. disinheritance. Everybody say disinheritance. disinheritance. Listen to me. There was or there is a pastor that I know and the fellowship that I ran, he is the coordinator. One day he came to me, he said, Pastor, I have a problem. In my father's house, we were born nine sons. And he was the second to the last. And he told me when the father died, the father had a lot of lands in the village. So they said they were going to sell the, they were going to share the lands. Everybody returned. They forgot to invite him. They shared the land finish. 
and they remembered that their brother did not return. It's, can you imagine? There were nine boys. They did not remember that they had another brother. And in our culture, after sharing your father's property, they don't repeat it again. <laughs> I don't know about your culture. When a man dies and the children gather to share the property, after sharing it, they don't repeat it. It's final. He came and told me, what can I do? I said, what does the culture say? He said, it's irrevocable. I said, leave it. Something was disinheriting you, your inheritance. He said, come, I'm going to minister to you. God is going to change everything and make you a powerful rich man that you will buy those properties from your brothers. He said, they forgot him. You know, there are certain times the witches will make sure nobody that. Now, I was preaching this evening in the prophetic conference, and I told them sometimes, you know, when Jesus was born, the Bible says that the first foreign visitors were called Matthew. the wise men, isn't it? Yeah. In Matthew chapter 2, can you put it on the board? Now, when Jesus was born in Bethlehem, Judea, in the days of Herod the king, in the day of Herod the king, behold, they came who wise men from where? Yes. The where? Yes, Verse two. Read with me, everybody. Say. Where is he that is born, the king of the Jews? For we have seen what. We have seen what? We have seen what? In the way. And we have come to do what? Now, the people who came to see Jesus, were they Jews? No. How do you know? The statement is clear. Where is he that is born the king of the Jews? For we, non-Jews, have come to because we have seen his word. That means that everybody that is born, there is a star representing you in heaven. Amen. Why do they come to see this one? This star was spectacularly different from other stars. And it's possible they wanted to hijack the destiny. And they couldn't. And they decided that, oh, now this star must be worshipped. Listen to me. There is a man I know of. He is a multi-millionaire. He's my personal friend. He's a pastor. He told me that he does not deserve the riches he has. He has one of the biggest hotels in my city. He said he does not deserve the wealth he has. That he does not suffer for them too much. What you say? There are people who are selling only biscuit, but they have money. People who are selling nonsense, but, they have, but people who are investing millions are, are living in debt. Are you laughing? I'm telling the truth. You know the broom they use in sweeping ground? There's a man selling broom in, in Onisha Market. The man has more than 20 buildings selling bread brooms. He load them in trucks and trailers and take it to other regions. The buildings he has, one building will have about 16 flats. 16 flats into 50 places. The people who are importing with billions are living in debt. Somebody selling room is having money. What is the problem? The seal was broken. And the man began to prosper. There are some people, there is a seal of indebtedness. No matter what you do, you must go dead. Some people are working. 
when they pay you salary, you use it to pay the debt of last month. And you start owing till the next month. Anybody who is in debt in this place, the seal of debt is broken in your life. I say it is broken in your life. Even to buy sugar, you buy buy it on credit. <laughs> no, I'm saying the truth. It's not a laughing matter. Yeah, it's okay. In the book of the Bible, there is man they, they said, I'm saying God, God, now we're talk, we we are talking about disinheritance. So there are certain things that are do for people. For example, there was a man they called Mephibosheth. Mephibosheth was a man that David decided to honor because of the covenant he had with Jonathan, his father. But after honoring him, when uh, David's son overthrew him and David began to grow, the person who was in charge of Mephibosheth came and lied to David that the boy was saying tall. You know the meaning of tall? He suits you. In our in our language, tall is he suits you. And if something happens to you, they say it suits you. That means tall. Everybody saying tall. He said that Mephibosheth was saying he suits you, that you hijacked his father's throne. But that was a lie. David now said, whatever that belongs to Jonathan, I give it to you. <laughs> when David was returning, then Mephibosheth managed in his lamb, came to see David with his bed. David said, well, say, my Lord, I asked my servant, Ziba to put me on a horse to come and greet you. He left me because I was lame. Let me say, but he told me you were making it all to me that the kingdom has departed from me. He said, if you see me, I did not shave my bed since the day you ran away until now because I was praying and mourning for you. And he paid David that he has given his inheritance to Ziba. And I say, okay, go and share it with Zipa. Because the decree has come forth from the king. So that which belonged to Zipa was disinherited. I have known so many people. When they were small, their father died. And their father had a lot of things. Their uncle would sell everything and put it in his pocket. And change everything his name. When the young man grows up, they will want to give him poison and kill him. Do you, does it happen in Kenya? It's happening in all African countries. Even as I'm talking, and there are people who are victims of it. Is there anybody who is a victim of that disinheritance? They took your land and sold. After this meeting, there will be restoration. I said there will be restoration. I said there will be restoration. I said there will be restoration. How many things have we dealt with? Four. We're going to the fifth one. The fifth one is called debt. D-E-B-T. Debt. As I said, there are people that to pay school fees, you must borrow. To pay house rent, you must borrow. To eat ugali, you must borrow. To cook madoki, you must borrow. Because there is a seal of this inheritance. The moment they give the person salary, the salary is worthless because it has already been spent. Oftentimes, the salary is not even enough to pay the salary. Come with me to 2 Kings chapter 4, verse 1 and 2. Can we read it together? One, two, go. Now they cried a certain woman of the 
wives of the sons of the prophets, not to Elisha, say ye, Your servant, my husband, is dead. And as you know, that, that my husband did fear the Lord. He was a righteous man. And the creditors is come to do what? To seize the two surviving children who were innocent. They didn't know when their father borrowed the money. Possibly they were not born when their father was borrowing the money. But their father died. But one striking testimony was that he feared the Lord. He was a righteous man throughout the time he was alive. A righteous pastor. One of the sons of the prophet lived one of the pastors in the city. He died possibly of hypertension as a result of the creditors that were bombarding him. <laughs> the dead refused to die and followed the two innocent boys to put them in slavery forever. The double portion of the anointing upon Elisha was what saved the two boys. Amen. Otherwise, they will have been walking like horse and a donkey until they will be 70 years to repay their father's debt. That means there was a seal, not only upon the father, but upon the family. And I'm sure the father must have died of own, not only his own death, but the death accumulated by his own dead father. Because the generational reproach. There are so many of you that are looking at me now. The money they borrowed to pay your school fees has not been paid. But after today, Amen. that debt will be cancelled. I said that debt will be cancelled. That debt will be cancelled. Another one is the seal of debt. D E A T H. He said, family, every time, everybody, every, every, every six months they will go for funeral. Every three months they will go to funeral. I am laughing. I'm saying the truth. Every time there is somebody to bury in the family. Because the seal of premature death is wrong again. You know, in the family of Lazarus, premature death was running there. Are you hearing me? Yes. Lazarus, in the book of John, chapter 11, verse 1, Mary wrote a letter and sent a message to the saying, Your servant whom you love is sick. Come and heal him. Jesus waited for four more days. By the time he was able to rise to go there, Lazarus has died and was buried. How do I know that premature death was ravaging their family? When Jesus was coming, the first person that welcomed him was Martha. And Jesus was entering the house. Mary came and sat by his leg. Martha went to the kitchen to cook. When Jesus rose up, of when Mary went up, they said, oh, hold her, she was going to cry at the grave. They said the relations were there to console them. Do you know the writer of that book did not mention that their father welcomed Jesus, nor their mother, because they were all dead prematurely. <laughs> No matter, he went and took the only surviving son and killed so that the family will be closed. Why? The seal of death was there. <coughs> Men and brethren, there are people, listen to me, anytime, sometimes you sleep, you will be seeing dead people. You will be seeing dead people in the dream. You wake up, you have drowned. What does, you, what does that mean? Death is knocking at your door. Sometimes you see coffee. Death is doing what? Knocking at your door. Every seal of death 
knocking at your door. He's here by broker. I said this broker. I said this broker. From your family, it is broker. From your life, it is broker. From your finances, it is broker. In the name of Jesus. seal of witchcraft. You no know, witchcraft is the worst thing that, is, that happened to Africa. You know, before the white man invented a role a black man was ahead of them. He has invented witchcraft and all of them are craft flying on the air. Four and a half hours from Lagos, I was already here. But witchcraft, you will take five minutes. Go down and kill somebody in Lagos. <laughs> As the aircraft is carrying goods, services, and passengers, witchcraft is carrying destinies of people and blood. You can go for The woman that, one, one mama that is living as a tenant in my house, the first son had first class in computer engineering. The government of Nigeria gave him scholarship to go and study computer policy. He was in the examination hall. A bed came and pitched on his head. He grabbed the bed and killed. He became mad and died of madness. It's not witchcraft. They wasted that destiny. This man will have been better than Bill Gates. Yeah. Than an old woman in the village or old mama or wicked man. Just didn't pay a Roblin ticket. He just came in America and gave him. Witchcraft is so terrible. That is why when I judge witchcraft, I pray as if it is the last prayer I'm praying. Then you don't pray that there's no witch. There is witch everywhere, left, right, and center. In fact, in this church, one witch came to church today. In fact, the witch will not go back. He will die by fire. I'm not joking. There is a witch here, an agent. But he made a mistake. The Pharaoh's army that followed Israel to the Red Sea. All of them sank in the sea. Yeah. So shall that which sink. Yeah. I will not go home in Jesus' name. Yeah. Stand up and let us pray. What is the number one sin? Yeah. Every delay. Every power and the seal of delay in your life. Catch fire and burn to ashes. Catch fire and burn to ashes. If your neighbor will disturb you, take another position. Because this is the... the they say, Joe Paul, why do you pray hard prayer? I don't know the meaning of hard prayer. The only thing I know is that Satan has hearing problem. The only language he respects is force and fire. I don't know why you train, Pastor, pay and train you people to laugh. I'm in a serious business, you can't see my teeth. Maybe you use my clean toothpaste. That's why you're laughing. Please close your eyes. This prayer will set 70 people free now. This number one prayer will set 70 people free. Shout after me and say, My Father! My father. Shout it again! My father. Every seal of delay! Every seal of delay! And the power of delay!
Yes. Yes. Someone is being released. Someone is being released from the father's house. From the mother's house. Somebody is being released. Somebody. 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 Uh-huh. 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 Lose yourself. 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 Yes. I say you've been set free. You are being released. You are being released. You are being released. You are being released. You are being set free. The seal is being broken. And the seal is broken. Yes, so in Jesus' name we pray. Close your eyes, lift your two hands. Jehovah, those people that are a match for release now, thou Holy Spirit, set them free now. Set them free now. We are going to the second seal. The seal of denial. Those things that are supposed to come to you. That the enemy is sitting upon it. And saying we cannot release it. That power must die. And the seal broken. Listen to me. What will happen is that there is somebody here. Your promotion has been denied you three times. Hear the word of the Lord. On the fifth day of October, there will be a good news for you. On the fifth day of October, there is a good news. I say there is a good news. I say there is a good news. I say there is a good news. 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 The enemy will deny you good health and give you sickness. That seal of sickness will be broken today. That good health will come to you. That denial will be broken from your life. That power of denial is being broken. It's happening somewhere. I say it's happening somewhere. It's happening somewhere. I say somebody is receiving healing. Shout after me and say, My father. My father. Every seal of denial. Every seal of denial. Over my destiny. Over my, destiny. Over my promotion. Over We're going to repeat it. Every seal of denial. Every seal of denial. Shout it louder.
seal is broken. Nobody that 